Okay, in this video, I want to look at the admin section of the website. And if we go back to our original urls.py file, we could see we've got this, we're importing this admin thing, and we've got this path to admin. So what is that? Well, Django comes with an administration area on the back end that you can do database stuff. And it's a nice little thing. If we actually come over here, we'll first go to our terminal and let's run our server. So Python manage.py runs server and then head over to our web browser and go to localhost colon 8000 slash admin and you see here's the login for the administration area now we don't have a login yet we haven't created that so let's go ahead and do that in this video right now so i'm going to come back here and control c to break out of our our server and we just want to type win pty Python manage.py. Now I'm typing winpty because you have to do that for git bash. If you're on a Mac or a Linux, you don't have to type winpty. Uh, you would just type python manage.py. Uh, but for us in git bash, also if you're using a different terminal on Windows, such as PowerShell or something, you won't have to type in winpty. This is just a git bash thing. For some reason, we have to do that. So, all right, we need to create super user. So the command is winpty python manage.py create super user and it's asking for a username I like admin so I'll just type that in email address you can put your email address or you can just leave it blank and hit enter and password type in a password now notice I just typed in my password but nothing appeared on the screen that's just a security measure that's normal so go ahead and hit enter go ahead and type it again all right, so our super user was created successfully. So now we can python manage.py run the server again and head back to this admin area. And now we can type in our, our new super user username and the password and boom, we have this cool little administration area. So there's nothing really in here now. If we click on users, we could see the user we just created, right? There's my email address. And if we click on this, you can, uh, you know, add some stuff. You want to add your name. I don't know why you would want to, but you can. And uh, let's see, save. You can also click on this and delete it if you want down here. Uh, you can change the password by, let's see, right here. There's a little link. So it's, it asks you for your password. You have to type it again, then you can change the password. Very cool. Uh, now, granted, there's not much going on here right now, obviously, but later on, this will be very, very useful to use to create our API because the API requires a database to store the API stuff in, and this allows us to interface with the database very easily. You know, we can click add user. Well, we can click a button later on to add things to the database for our API, and it's just super useful. So that's the admin area. Not much to see there now, but later on it will be cool, I promise. And I think that's all for this video. So in the next video, we will start building our model for our API.